right, next we're going to talk about, about the talk about the passage of blood vessels, blood through blood vessels. Blood is going to pass through the following loop of vessels when, when moving away from the heart. So if we were to start at the heart, we're then going to move into arteries. From arteries, we're going to branch into small, smaller arterioles, and then we're going to branch into capillaries. Capillaries are going to be where the primary gas nutrient exchange happens in the capillary. Um, those are going to be your smallest from the capillary. We're going to start our return journey back towards the heart. Um, so we're going to return from a capillary to a venule, from a venule to a vein, and back up to the heart. I'm going to break down each one of these components just a little bit. Arteries are going to be very thick muscular vessels that carry blood away from the heart to body tissues. Um, there's going to be multiple layers of the of these tissues. Uh, I'm sorry, there's going to be multiple layers of the arteries. Um, the inner layer is called the endothelium. The, uh, the middle layer is going to be full of elastic fibers. They're going to allow the artery to stretch. Um, there's also going to be a layer of, of smooth muscle in this middle layer. This is going to allow the artery to contract. So the walls can allow for stretching and for um, contracting. Um, the outermost layer is going to be full of connective tissue. That connective tissue is going to anchor the artery in place. So as we've already mentioned, um, the elastic walls allow for the stretching with the heart pumping. This is why you can feel your pulse at certain points on major arteries. They also help maintain blood pressure in the artery. So in the moments when um, your, heart, so your heart surges, your heart pumps, there's a huge surge of blood going across. Um, then once the heart is not pumping, um, blood pressure is going to drop significantly. This is why it's so beneficial that the walls of the arteries are elastic. Um, so it's not like we have blood sloshing around, like um, blood goes, you know, like it's not like we have an open pipe where a flood comes and it fills up and then the flood dies away and there's suddenly running dry and then fills up and runs dry and fills up and runs dry. No, instead it's elastic, so it stretches and relaxes, stretches and relaxes with the blood. So it helps maintain constant blood pressure at all times. Now there are certain homeostatic imbalances that can be associated with arteries. Um, for example, an aneurysm. An aneurysm is caused by the weakening of the wall of an artery. So um, it'll actually cause um, an outward swelling, kind of like an overstretched balloon. Um, if you've ever blown up a balloon and then let it out again and then blown it up and then let it out, you may notice that some areas will be a little bit weaker. Um, usually like the tip of the balloon will blow up first um, and it will kind of have like an outward swelling. Um, this can be, if it's caught in time, it can be surgically removed. We'll simply clip that weakened section of the artery out, reattach the artery on either side, and um, ultimately just get rid of that weakened section. Um, however, if it does burst, um, it can form life-threatening clots. Um, or it can, depending on where it's located, the aneurysm, if it's in the brain, it can cause um, rapid and immediate um, blood swelling in the brain, can cause um, swelling that can ultimately lead to death. So it can be a very dangerous condition if it's not caught and treated early. Arterioles are going to be our next stop. Arterioles are just the very smallest arteries. They're going to help control blood pressure as well. They're going to be the gatekeepers to the capillary networks, either keeping them open or closed to allow um, blood flow through those capillaries at need. Ultimately, they're going to be responding to hormones, the nervous system, and local conditions to tell whether or not they need to be opened or closed. Capillaries are going to be microscopic blood vessels. I mean, itty bitty, teeny, 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 tiny. Um, they are going to be the site of exchange of materials between the blood and the body cells. They have tiny little cells that are only, they have tiny little walls that are only about one cell thick. This provides an enormous amount of surface area for exchange. Um, so when we increase the surface area like this, blood flow is actually going to slow down. So here it's going along on super highways, but when we come out and branch off into these many different routes in these capillaries, um, the blood flow is actually going to slow down quite a bit, and it's going to give it time for exchange to happen between um, the capillaries and the cell membranes of uh, that are located in that area. So the blood flow blood flows very slowly, allowing more time for exchange of materials. 
from our capillaries, we're going to move into our venules. So here's just a quick diagram to show you where we've been. We had arteries, arterioles, then we have um, the arterioles that are responsible for controlling blood flow into the capillaries. Here we have our gaseous exchange, and then we move into our venules. Venules on the other side are going to be where the capillaries merge to form venules, the smallest kind of vein. Um, and again, we're just transporting blood back to the heart at this point. From those venules, we go to our veins. The veins are going to carry the blood all the way back up to the heart. And that's it for our discussion on blood vessels.